Okay, boys. Good. Uh, <clears throat> made it to episode 31. Good stuff. And this is the first one in our new new studio spot at the new gym. And have my buddy Bulldog on. David Bulldog Mashad. And most of you guys know him. He 18 and 6 professional record. How many amateur fights did you have? Uh, I had 15 AMI fights all, all before I graduated high school, I think. 15 AMI fights. Okay, so how many MMA fights total? Well, so on my pro record, it's 18 and 6, but I also have two wins that I had, but South Dakota didn't have a commission, so they didn't all. So like 26, 15, so 41 uh, MMA fights. Boom, fucking 41 MMA fights. And you wrestle, wrestled for? Uh, South Dakota State, played football there, or I was on the football team there for a year, on the wrestling team for a few years. So 33 now, and then you started fighting professionally when you were what age? Uh, pretty sure when I was 18, Yeah, the, like, I think that first year that I was in college. So when you had your first fight, because I had to wait till I was 18 to have my first fight. Did you have to wait till you're 18? No, I had my first fight when I was 15 and so no commission in South Dakota. So at the Sturgis motorcycle rally, you can just roll up and mm -hmm. sign your name, but I needed my dad's signature. Like I needed a parent's guardian because I wasn't an adult. Mm -hmm. So 15, went up, signed up. They asked your weight. I wrote it down. Then they was like, oh, this guy's like uh, 185. I was 170. Do you want to fight him? I'm like, yeah. I mean, we came up here to do that. So took the fight, and he was like probably closer to 200. But mm -hmm. just went out, threw an overhand, didn't land it. I wasn't, I wasn't a striker. Mm -hmm. I didn't know any. I had done like very minimal boxing, so not too much. And then... Took him down, choked him out. Didn't know any jujitsu either, you know. Yeah, that's where it's nice. Where where we're kind of we're from. We got a lot of experience fighting, especially at a young age. We got yeah. a lot of fights. Like in, in these days, in AZ, <coughs> it's so fucking hard to find someone in an amateur fight, yeah. dude. I feel yeah. bad. It is. It's true. Like it seems so hard to get guys fights, and shows ain't happening very often. Well, yeah. especially the last two years, you know, mm -hmm. fucking, you couldn't get guys anything. Like if you were trying to start a career in the last two years, or even just trying to get more fights as like mm -hmm. a mid level pro guy trying to get into a big show, mm -hmm. there's no shows. You couldn't couldn't get fights. There's like almost no way to advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you've had a fucking sick ass career. Always fought like the toughest people you could find. Fought in the UFC, beat up Jingling, um, <laughs> a handful of other fights. But you can't fly. You have a fear of flying. Yeah. So I feel like that was the reason the UFC kind of let you go. Yeah, I got offered a fight in Australia, and so they knew I couldn't fly, mm -hmm. and they offered me a fight in Australia, and I was like, well. I mean, obviously. So I think that was just kind of their way of, might have yeah. been their way of being like, all right, let's usher him out the door. Because was jo Joe Silva the matchmaker at the time? Or yeah. Was it Sean? But it was it was Joe Silva. But I mean, I guess that they said Sean was still like part of it, mm -hmm. but Joe yeah. Silva was main guy. But uh, but it was weird because after I lost to uh, Mercier in Canada, mm -hmm. they gave me a new four fight deal. Mm -hmm. So I got a new deal. I got a raise. So I was one and two, but I'm like, man, they must, they must like me, you know, mm -hmm. like this is sweet. So they gave me that new deal and then they told me short notice. And that was when I think we had, we was driving back, I think from Riggs's fight mm -hmm. and Vegas. And we were both like, fuck, we should just go 70, like 55 mm -hmm. is too low. Mm -hmm. I think we both kind of decided to go 70. I was like, yeah, then I could do short notice. So I let them know, you know, I could do anything mm -hmm. short notice at 70. Just let me know in in the u.s and they told kind of kept me on the shelf it's like yeah stay ready stay ready and then stayed ready for like five six months got cut yeah fucking weird just because it just sucks too because that australian fight was such a good easy easy fight for you yeah. but that's the way it goes ufc is fucking weird dude yeah. they like their people they don't like their people and, and who knows but dude you had a crazy fucking tournament in the pfl like one of the craziest yeah. It's craziest shit I've ever seen. You dre Okay, so you have a I was kind of part of this fight camp, I think. Um you had a, the fight with the Sadubu. 
And where yeah. was that at? So that one was in Jersey. Yeah, that one was in Jersey. No, how, that one was in New York, and then the next fight I think yeah. was in Jersey. How far of a drive from Arizona? Because you have, David would have to drive to all his fights, yeah, and it no seems flying. like they they booked him in fights. When you fought Olivier Mercier or whatever, that was in Montreal. Yeah, Montreal. So that was a motherfucker of a drive. So I you, remember you. So on that one, your fucking your visa or your passport was like drive, different. Yeah, drive it was over drive. Only. It was drive over the border yeah. only, not fly. Yeah. So Tim had to fly to Vermont. Or is that what it was? Somewhere so. on the border. And then my dad took my car like three hours, drove down, picked you up, and then drove back to Montreal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you was uh, coming to corner me and Brian. Yep. And well, and Riggs. It was me, yep. Brian, and Riggs on that car. Yep. Went. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fuck. And then Riggs, after the fight, he was like, he's slicker than a greased up dong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Saying that Cote was greasing up. But the, okay, so the PFL, the the Sadabu guy. This wasn't in the tournament. This was in no, the preseason. No, so yeah, yeah. It's like uh, they consider it uh, like regular season. Yeah. So you drive mm-hmm. all the way to fucking New York. Yeah. And get kicked in the body with what in like the first ten yeah, seconds. Yeah. Like get dropped in the first ten seconds. And quickest dude, fight of my pro career. Finished in seventeen. Dude, people don't understand when you when you get your liver just whacked, dude. It just, yeah. You don't have control. You get paralyzed for about for. For me, when I've had it bad, it's been probably six, seven seconds. Just enough for the ref to stop it. Yeah. I The way I describe it is it feels like someone has like a giant syringe, like a giant needle, and mm-hmm. they just stabbed me and they sucked like all of my insides out. It's like you can't open up. Like your body just like crumbles. It was like like I just deflated Yeah, every time. Like this fucking, yeah, like bag. this bag. I'm just like get sucked. <gasps> and you tried because I remember I went down. I was like, fuck, grab a leg. And I like got like on his ankle and i was like okay hold on he just stepped out you yes. got no strength <laughs> yeah. he just stepped out of it and started hitting me and he was a nice guy he was like yeah. hitting me like looking at the ref like come on and it's weird it's always those fights which on paper it's like this is easy this is the best matchup for me is this yeah. easy money going fight. in that's what i was thinking it was like man this guy like i don't normally wrestle obviously yeah. but it's like man i'll just take him down you know he's former kickboxer former yeah muay thai guy so no big deal just get him get inside take him down he's got no wrestling could wrestle him for a while probably get a sub nope go out yeah get put away so then it, after that you get another shot against this handison for guy who's 14 and 2 a good ass fighter you yeah just, he had some good wins too he actually beat uh what's his name that was here for a, a little bit uh story yeah, he beat Story. He beat a couple other guys. That a were big decent. jack motherfucker, probably on steroids too. But fourteen and two, TKO him. So then you make it in the tournament, which is yeah. cool. Make it in the tournament, and then the and then you fight John Howard, who's like a lot of people know who John Howard yeah, is. Yeah, he's, he's got been a big around record, a long time. Big kickboxing record. Um, you beat him. So the same night you have a like an hour, and then you got to f- yeah. fight Glyco Franco, who's this jacked up fucking roided monster. Yeah, he w- and he he tested positive for like four different anabolics on that fight. Yeah, Tw- afterwards twenty one and five. So people who've never fought before, after your fight, you don't understand what your body does after the adrenaline dump. Yeah. You're just like even if you weren't sometimes in a war, which John Howard was a fucking war. As soon as you cool down and the adrenaline wears off, you're like, holy fuck, I feel like like a train wreck. Yeah. So you go in the decision with John Howard and then be like, all right, strap up. Now you got the Glyco Franca guy, who's a huge motherfucker, 21 and 5. You got him next. Yeah, like 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, I remember after the fight and uh, cr- like Crouch and my dad were like, man, did he feel big? And I was like, man, you know, like just like a normal guy. Then I watched it, watching it back. And I was like, what the fuck, Huge. man? This guy, there's no way. He had to be over 200 going into the cage. Yeah. Big motherfucker. Yeah. So there's rare, there's not many people on this planet that could have two fights in one night like that, especially at that level. And it honestly, that was so fun. You know, it was hard. Obviously, it was super hard. And like you're saying, everyone who fights knows, you know, after the fight, it's like, the a huge weight off your shoulders mm-hmm. you're not worried about getting your fucking ass kicked mm-hmm. you're not worried about well at that point i was on espn like not worried about getting embarrassed on mm-hmm. tv you're relieved so yeah bit. but so going into the fight you that for going into that first fight it was like kind of had to have a different mindset you know mm-hmm. it's like okay this is just part of the night like mm-hmm. and i kind of had a plan to not to try not to you know i don't want to go out there and just get in a war and just bang it out with mm-hmm. this guy like, but you still my, need to win. Yeah, but you still need to win. So I wrestled more in that fight. But 
scouting him, he was he was pretty uh, accepting of being on his back. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, you're not you're not gonna submit me. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. if I get on top and half guard, like I could stay here. Yeah. So that so probably for about six of the ten minutes of the fight, I just kind of stayed in half guard and mm-hmm. just poked at him a little bit but it was like just kind of try to ride it out as much as you can don't yep. let yourself well don't get cut because if you get cut you can't continue so mm-hmm. that's a big thing and i get cut all the time and now they took that away so they don't they don't do the two fights in one yeah night anymore. last year they only did uh one fight which is kind of shitty mm-hmm. i mean that was what pfl's big thing was you know yeah like, that's what made it different more mm-hmm. even more than the season because you're still just fighting 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 yeah and then it's like everyone's like oh man the two fights one night and then it's like, well, now you're just in the God, order. but PFL looks at it as like, God, there's a big chance someone's going to get hurt. And then some random guy gets back in that big pot yeah. of money. Yeah. And that's what, the, that's what I figured. You know, they signed, uh, they signed Rory for big money. They signed Pettis. There's probably mm-hmm. like, don't give them a chance to not fight that second fight in one night. Yeah. But then neither of them, well, Pettis, I didn't even make uh playoffs and then Rory made playoffs, but Cooper just beat him. Yeah. Cooper's a motherfucker. So then you get Cooper in the finals. You get a couple months to get ready for him. And then the show money is how much, and then the win money is how much oh, in this man. fight when you sign a contract. So show money for the for the finals fight is 50, and then... 50K. The So if you win, win bonus, that's when you get the million. But it's not a full million. Yeah, yeah. The million's over. cumulative between those two fights in the playoffs. So it would have been 850. <laughs> yeah so big you, big win bonus you go into the fight and you got 50k if you if you show up which is cool yeah comfortable if you win you get 850 yeah one fight that night and you, oh man bro yeah. w- w- did you think about it much going into that fight was it hard not i mean to? it was in your mind but i still feel like uh even more than more than the money it's like man i can't let this guy fucking smack Fuck me, me with yeah. one of those big hooks you yeah. know he like he knocks out a lot of guys he mm-hmm. comes in throws hard so it was, I mean, it was definitely in the back of my mind because that's, that's comfortable living. Yeah. You know, that's, you don't got to worry about You're getting some good investments. You're chilling. Yeah. And so I was kind of upset that the show money was just 50 though. It's yeah. like, dude, fucking world title fight and all you're guaranteed is 50. Like they're trying to, you know, they're saying that they're trying to be on Bellator, ES, like Bellator level of mm-hmm. that number two promotion it's like no one in bellator is probably fighting a title fight for 50 and yeah hell no i remember for the the, the bellator tv show uh rigs made it to the finals and the finals was five thousand to show and then 95 to win yeah so that was a big split too yeah like, fuck. it's like dude what the hell come on i mean it's tough so then after that season you they signed Rory McDonald and then you were going to be Rory mcdonald's first fight in the pfl right yeah i was uh so that 2020 season i was scheduled to fight him well not scheduled but they had told me before the season started that i was gonna fight him and then they ended up just canceling the whole season Mm -hmm. and then 2021 last year i was scheduled to fight him and yeah i was training for it and everything and yeah through and then what what ended up happening so through training i mean i was kind of starting to get in camp and you know, all throughout the training, I was I was still training hard, obviously. Like, mm-hmm. uh, Jared had fights and stuff, so I was training with him. And then during my camp, I ended up getting COVID. And after COVID, I had, like, bad EKGs. So I had never had my heart checked out before because all my EKGs were normal on all my physicals. Mm-hmm. So COVID caused uh, some myocarditis. Some, But I, they don't know if it was COVID because they just call it athlete's heart. So Mm -hmm. that's like when your heart swells, Mm -hmm. when you have a larger heart. So they wasn't worried about that. But while looking at my heart, they saw that it had a lot of other issues. And one of them was one of my valves was messed up. It's called a bicuspid aortic, aortic valve. It's supposed to have three, three pieces on it to allow blood flow. And mine just has two. So it'll stay open. And Hmm. whenever, uh, you know, whenever, uh, like you hear about kids dying in high school football, like where their heart explodes, mm-hmm. that's what I have, but it, it progresses at different speeds. So mm-hmm. for me, I was able to get through all this other stuff. And then now when they were looking at it, they were like, you're too, you're too far gone. 
but so they say that the valve will stay open and the blood will regurgitate in your heart so it's not really going through your body mm -hmm. it just kind of stays in your heart and then the heart starts trying to beat faster to compensate for that to try to push the blood out and that's when like your heart will explode so thank god they found that because you get into training and like we start doing the the sparring rounds and yeah, but I was already, 90. but I was I was only like two and a half weeks out from the fight. So for me, because I and I was feeling it after COVID, like my heart was getting super high. I had my heart rate monitor and I was getting like it would be like over two hundred beats per minute, Ooh, fuck. like for minutes on end while I was in Jeez. training. So yeah, then they're like, well, no, that's not good. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I'm still pushing my way through it. You know, yeah. I'm doing all my sparring rounds. I'm getting everything done that I need to. Mm -hmm. So like guys give me two more weeks like let me let me get this fight let yeah. me get at least this fight and you know honestly like rory wasn't the same as he used to be mm -hmm. like everyone i think everyone kind of agrees with that but i would have been his first fight after losing the bellator title yeah so you know i could have been like man like i just beat the guy who in his last fight fought for the bellator yeah. title so i was really hoping to be that first fight but yeah yeah and you like probably would have fucking clubbed him. So, and then the doctor said, Hey, if you, if your heart rate goes over what you're in danger. So when it first happened, like all the guidelines and stuff that they have, it's, it was 120. So they said, don't get your heart rate over 120. Don't lift more than 70 pounds. I'm like, well, what does that mean? You know, because I've been doing all this stuff. You're telling me I got to stay in shape but I can't get my heart rate over 120. You're telling me I got to stay in shape. I can't get fat, but I can't lift over 70 pounds. So it's like, well, what, what am I supposed to do? You know, am I just going on not very vigorous walks? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. so after that, I ended up, uh, I talked to some different doctors and then I ended up going to university of university of Texas at Houston. And they have apparently, and I obviously didn't know this before, but they have like one of the best cardiology departments, I guess, in the country. And so they did an exercise study on me where they put me through a bunch of different stuff and they kind of gave me some, some better guidelines as far as heart rate goes. They said, uh, as long as I stay in shape, 160 is where I could push my heart rate to, which at least now I can kind of break a sweat, you know, oh, fuck like yeah. I can start feeling like I'm working out a little bit. Yeah. And not barely be winded and be stressed and that you're going to yeah, croak. Just... Like all I was doing before, I would just get on the Airdyne for a half hour and whenever it was 120 and I would put my heart rate monitor on and I would just try to stay at 120. Like mm -hmm. it would get a little higher, come down, let mm -hmm. it get a little higher, come down. And it was shitty, you know, Yeah. like get a little bit of lift, but like not even enough to really get a pump. And I still, I still can't get a pump because that pump is when you're, another thing is blood pressure. Mm-hmm. So I can't let my blood pressure rise too high. So if, you know, when you're lifting hard and you feel a good pump, your blood pressure is high. So I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But I've been able to get some good, get some decent work in. Like, just, well, that's what they, so they told you, they're like, you're gonna have to retire or you're running the risk of dying. Uh, yeah. So like, um, the cardiologist I talked to, cause I need to do, so after my bad EKG went then the new jersey or new york i'm not sure where the fight was supposed to be athletic commission and pfl they sent back and they're like hey after that ekg it was like you need a stress test uh so the ekg was apparently like super bad mm -hmm. my cousin's a cardiologist and i showed it to her and after i showed her the ekg she's like yeah we need she said all the same things that uh pfl and the state athletic commission said we need a stress test we need a a echocardiogram which is just the where they look at your heart through a like a what the fuck is it ultrasound mm -hmm. um a holter monitor which was a fucking i had to have a bunch of things all over me for like two days and then a cardiac mri which claustrophobic that was fucking hard and a, a chest mri when they're doing your heart they make you hold your breath so I was in there fucking, my heart's already beating hard as fuck because I'm in this MRI machine. I'm scared yeah. as fuck. And then they're trying to make me hold my breath for a minute, but <laughs> my heart's beating. Dude, so those MRIs hard, are a man. bitch. Yeah. I am not claustrophobic at all, and I've fucking tapped out in those MRIs a handful of times. But the thing is, every time I've tapped out my MRI, they just said, tough it out, buddy. Just keep going. I'm like, get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> you're all right. You're all right. Keep it yeah. up. It's like, I'm no, like, you're fuck. not in here, motherfucker. Yeah, no shit. But, so after seeing all that, then like they – the cardiologist I was talking with, they're like, no, no cardiologist mm -hmm. will, um, 
clear you like yeah. no one which like a lot of people in your circumstance like they get that fucking news they could go into a depression start doing a bunch of mm -hmm. dumb shit but you've like turned into one of the like best coaches at the lab helping the boys and stuff How, how's that transition been it's and it's been all right i mean i enjoy i enjoy helping the guys for sure like mm -hmm. that's not what i that's not what i was here for you yeah. know i was still i still Itch like want to whoop, whoop some motherfuckers asses yeah. but it is different but i i enjoy it and it's mostly you know i had one have been i had one have been helping more like just kind of i would starting to pull back on sparring i would really only spar in the cage i wouldn't mm -hmm. do outside rounds mm -hmm. so i had more time to kind of help people and i had been holding for hammy for a little bit so then i was kind of holding for mario too and but it was hard right after and you know well fuck dude that's the that's the thing is like you spend your whole life getting getting to this point where you're you're the best you've ever been yeah and finally making some decent money yep. like finally making enough money where oh i don't have to hold down a second job i don't have to yep. be like hey you know what classes need to get picked up at the gym like yep. i could take these classes now yep. it was like all i have to do is train and fight Yep. and that was what i had wanted and i had been that way for a few years but that was literally everyone's yeah. dream when you start fighting you know you don't want to be trying to hold down a couple other odd jobs to make ends meet yep. like i was finally doing enough to where it was Which just the, fighting at the beginning like you got, yeah you that's just the way to. it is yeah. yeah but you're working your way to Oh, I don't need to go. Like I was working at Knockout Fitness for a while. It's like I don't need to fucking go to Knockout and yeah. teach these people who, which you know that not that that was horrible, but it's not guys who want to learn martial arts. It's people who want just want to get a workout. Yeah, just being a fitness instructor. But I've been yeah, I've been enjoying it. You know, all the guys. I, it would be hard. Like I wouldn't be able to just go to like some new gym. Like I just yeah. kind of enjoy it because I know all the guys it's and I'm boys, invest. Yeah. yeah, I'm invested in them. Yeah, for sure. And it, yeah, the camaraderie and just being around the boys is is a good shit. But God, even the, even like with with Mark, if you guys didn't see it, maybe maybe Jay can pull it oh, on the screen. Man. But Mark PFL this weekend, uh, uh, super good Division One wrestler, good athlete, and yeah. works Ohio fucking State. hard. Works fucking hard. He's always in there, just improving, improving, improving. Super quiet guy, stays pretty low key, but he's always working hard. And it's been how many years that he's been trying to perfect his craft. Finally, starts to get a like a, an opportunity. Yeah. An opportunity to be on the PFL like Challenger series, and then he gets hit with the fucking right hand. Just gets hit with the right hand, and his eye pops out of his fucking skull. After he was winning the fight, like he was, he had hurt the guy a few times. He threw a couple high kicks. So that guy ducked into, didn't didn't land it flush, but had the guy backing up, doing great, like best he's ever looked mm -hmm. for sure. Really throwing his hands good. Didn't even have to worry about trying to wrestle. Was just just winning easily. I thought like. The guy didn't do anything to him. Mark was walking him down the whole time. Guy's back's against the fence, whips an overhand, breaks his orbital. Yeah. It, and then his eyes start sagging out. Well, you guys fuck, probably see it on the screen oh, right man. now. But I was like, oh, my God, bro. I was I was sick. And then watching it, like, seeing it. And I'm thinking, like, Drake, like, dude, you can't fucking send someone out there, mm -hmm. like, with their eye like that. But he said that he looked fine in the corner, and then he stood up whenever seconds whenever the corner went out mm -hmm. and the, like he must have blown his nose and it fucking yeah and that but normally Ooh. you know normally it's like outside it's it shuts the eye it yeah. doesn't that's the first time i've ever seen it where the fucking where the eyeball like kind of gets pushed out of the socket and and down he must have just blew his nose fucking hard but i wonder have you heard anything like did they are they going to get the eye back to working or is this going to be one eye now so he was saying uh and this was just from what Crouch had told me that, uh, or I guess he posted on Instagram about it too, that he had a little bit of vision. Crouch said they're driving back. He can't fly because of the pressure. Mm -hmm. But he thinks, I mean, I don't know. He said that he's going to need surgery to fix the orbital, but hopefully the eye will Goes be working again. Place. And if it does, if it works and he's cleared to fight, he'll fight. And if mm -hmm. not, if know. not yeah but. and he's got a degree and he could probably coach college wrestling somewhere but yeah. dre said he was they were they had good spirits his dad still he's his dad is saying well he knows what he signed up for and he said mark had mark was good dude i don't know if i could be good with my eyeballs hanging out of my head if i saw it i would just be like oh fuck yeah watching it like looking at it 
I was feeling sick to my stomach. I was, oh, oh God. man, I'm, I was pacing around the house. My wife's fuck. like, what? You all right? I'm like, fuck. I was like, you don't want to see this. You don't want to see this. Then she looks she's like, oh, my God. I'm like, oh. yeah, that Damn. was, I think that's much worse than even like a Anderson, Chris Weidman leg break, you know? Dude, fuck yeah. Yeah, that, that's got to be up there. That's got to be up there with the, the worst. But the uh, shit came out yesterday that Cain Velasquez got um, charged with attempted, attempted murder. murder. And then it came out more that someone was, was it his daughter? I had read that it was one of his kids at first, and now it's stuff saying that it's one of his relatives, which they might be, like the news stations might be saying relative because yeah. you're not supposed to identify minors. So they'll just say relative because if they say it's his kid, then that kind of narrows it down more. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Like this just kind of leaves it more open ended, so people don't know the the person who was being sexually abused. If and, it was, yeah. And allegedly, he was booked into the Santa Clara County Main Jail on Monday for attempted murder after he allegedly shot at a man who was recently accused of molesting a relative, possibly a hundred times. Yeah. See, I had said like. Uh, Cause at first I it said that it was abuse, and I was like, man, what? Like if I was Kane, I would just whoop some motherfucker's ass, you know. And uh, Hammy's like, well, would you rather fight him or, or shoot him? I'm like, well, it's not like Kane is a normal guy, you know. Yeah. It's not you get Kane versus some random Joe on the street. He doesn't really need a gun. But then seeing that, it's like that that I can more understand. I thought it, yeah. when it just said abuse, I thought it was like smack the kid, which obviously you're gonna be mad about. But yeah. now it's. Dude, and it's like, I, I can't even imagine because I don't have a kid, but I would almost be like, I'm not going to shoot this motherfucker. That's way too easy for yeah. him. I'm going to be smart and tactical. I'm going to get this dude in the basement, and I'm going to skin him. <laughs> start cutting toes off. Yeah, just skin him. Start cutting fingers off. Skin him and make it just way worse. Like, but uh, like, fuck, like uh, do you ever watch Game of Thrones? Uh, Yeah, a little There's bit. There's the, one of the guys, They that's what he does. He has the his banner is the flayed man. So mm -hmm. how he tortures people is like, he cuts their, all of their skin off. Damn. <laughs> yeah. You could have done something like that. Something a little <laughs> bit, something a little better, but dude, but you know, it's so, it's like, that's gotta be so emotional. I like that's just imagine. like, you just hear can't. that this guy fucking gets out of jail. So it's just like, boom, I got to kill him. You just, yeah. You just see fucking red and it's, yeah, it just sucks so bad. I wonder it are the judges allowed to have like, empathy for that are they allowed to look at that and just see that it's tempted murder that's what we got to go off or like yeah well i wonder like and then i would feel like you would have more uh he might have more success and i don't know anything about fucking lawyer yeah, yeah. or anything but like if he goes to a jury trial because then all you need is like one of 12 people to say he's not guilty you know to get i'm pretty sure Maybe I'm fucking lying. No, I think that's right. But yeah, I think they like, all need to agree. They all need to agree on guilty. If one of them says not guilty, then it's like a hung jury and then just you're you're off, I think. Oh. That's so, gonna happen. It's gotta fucking happen. Yeah. Dude. It's got to happen. Especially everyone who's ever known Kane that I've known, they're like, he's the most nicest genuine yeah. fucking dude out there. Yeah, and it's not like the 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 I like with the judge. I wonder if she can be like, "Hmm, I'm gonna put myself in that scenario. What would I do?" Yeah, like you just gonna call the cops? Like, <laughs> well, so the guy had been arrested already. Oh, the and then he got out on bail. So once that's what I had read that he was arrested, and then he got out on bail, and once Kane heard he was out, he went hunting. <sighs> so Kane literally could go to prison for a long ass time. Yeah, for that shit just fucked just super fucked but uh what else we got um uh, the war in ukraine you've been keeping up on that at all <laughs> i mean just on like twitter on social media what <laughs> yeah, i see me too. but it's it's fucking nuts could you imagine just like just being sitting here like we're just trying to go through our normal everyday life and just boom 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 like just fucking bombs Dude. start going off. well i guess I actually had a someone just popped off three shots at my apartment last night so oh you're yes yeah, <laughs> not exactly spot. the same <laughs> but spot. yeah I, I, dude i've been thinking about that a lot when i'm at home just doing comfortable shit worrying about the petty shit i have to worry about compared to like holy fuck and then there was like uh you've seen all the boxers right yeah like uh loma the klitschko brothers yep. are over there uh usix over there and uh 
and oh, I think that oh no, the I think I saw that the Bellator's one seventy champ. Yeah, I saw uh, that too. Yar- Yargus, well, I don't know his name, but yeah. he said that he's back over there now. Man, I'm like, well, for the Klitschko's and Loma, I'm like, dude, like buy some mercenaries for five mil, and yeah, like you go chill in your mansion in L.A. or something. Yeah, like, no shit. It's weird, just with like uh, the Putin though. Is he, it's one guy that can make the decision. Yeah, have you seen like the how the meetings are they're on like this like 20 yard long table he's on one side and all the other guys are at the other so and he's calling it and he's calling the shots but i guess they're saying that he's worried about like someone trying to assassinate him so he's not letting anyone close to him except like his his closest guards so even his top generals are all the way at the other side of the room like they're not at the same table but it's this cartoonishly long table you know, that's, that's like 20 yards wild, long, bro. and they're all just sitting there just taking their marching orders from. Yeah, it just seems so old school, especially when one guy can make those decisions. Yeah. Like, maybe his girl didn't give him some puss. Maybe he fucking <laughs> I don't think that's bad. allowed. I don't think. Uh, well, oh, yeah. I don't think people he, are allowed to say no to Putin. He, he like, gets his puss. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, fucking A's. Well, RDA got a new opponent. I was hoping it'd be was, Islam. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's got that Moicano. Yeah, which is still a sweet fight, but God damn it, Islam would have been sick. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. They were scheduled before, right? Uh, yeah, they were I scheduled thought. before. Islam, though, seeing the how... I'm like, he might have fucked up RDA, too, dude. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the guys that RDA's been losing to. You know, these mm-hmm. uh, strong wrestlers that could push the pace for a while. RDA's had a crazy strength of schedule, man. He's like... He's fought the best guys at 55 and 70, oh, bro. just up and down. Yeah. And obviously he lost to all the top guys at 70, but it was just bigger wrestlers when kind of doing what he wants to do. Yeah. You've been watching any of the countdown uh, in embedded with Colby and Jorge? No, I, I haven't seen any of them. They're pretty good, actually. It's pr- some pretty good fucking drama. You know how the UFC is so good at souping it up. I saw, I saw one clip, and it was uh, Colby and Jorge were – well, they were basically making fun of each other about how they each lost to Usman. And I'm oh. like, you're basically both just being like Usman's beer dad. And he's like, no, he's your fucking dad. And it's <laughs> like, well, I mean, he's both of your dads, I guess. So Yeah. Who you got? I I think Colby. I mean, I feel like, uh, and maybe it's different since Jorge's been at 70. But, you know, when he was at 55, he was never like a one punch. Like, he couldn't just put people away yep. like that. And now he did it with Till and then with Askren, but Askren was a knee. So I don't think he can put Colby away without Colby just kind of wrestling him. You know? Yeah. And Colby's got that insane cardio. Yep. Yep. And I feel like the best thing Jorge they got on their side is like those coaches were around Colby for yeah. a long time. So they, yeah, they, they know they know what side he's gonna shoot with his head on. They they like know a lot of his setups, they know a lot of his striking, but God, his style it seems just so hard to fight the way he ducks his head. You don't know he if he throws shooting. that head straight down. And I thought that when he fought Brian. Yeah. Like, but he would just throw his head straight down and throw that left and then Brian would throw straight and he would he would miss. And it's like, man, like no one should be doing this, but Yeah. He's he's getting away with it, and then he'll just blast W out of nowhere. Cause yeah. you, so you got to respect him du- dip, dipping his head like that. So I don't know either. I would love to see Jorge win. But yeah, fuck. I'd like to see Jorge win, but I just don't. I mean, it's hard to say. You know, anything could happen. But I guess Jorge too. He he's not the. Uh, it's not for a title, and he's getting pay per view money. And I guess word has it that he's the top three paid guy in the UFC. All I saw it was. Uh, they might do it for the BMF title. No way. That's what I. That's what I had been reading. I saw. I thought I saw someone posted a quote that Dana said they might do it for the BMF title. But I'm hmm. like, wouldn't he lose that when he got knocked out? To yeah, Usman? yeah, yeah <laughs> like, exactly. He got knocked out. Out. Yeah, exactly. I'm pumped for the fight though. I'm actually fucking. Who else is on the card? One. So that's art. Is RDA the co-main? RDA is the co-main. So. It was was that initially supposed to be with the Fazeev? Someone said it was yeah, supposed, it was to, be supposed to be five rounds. I, I, it was, I think it was supposed to be five rounds because it was a main event. It was supposed to be main event when Mario fought the oh, other okay. week. It was supposed to be main event then, and then I think it was a, uh, I don't know what it was, visa issues or something, and Fazeev mm. can't couldn't come over, and then uh, so it got pushed back to this card. So I guess maybe they was just keeping it five mm. rounds since it was already five. But that was cool. I mean. I think they could do more five-round fights as long as it's not like 
a heavyweight. Yeah, and yeah, for sure. Edson versus Bryce Mitchell. Bryce Mitchell is always like, God, I see, I see, like the the UFC on the rise and stuff. I see how he's training. I'm like, God, but then he goes out there and he's just yeah. game as fuck, dude. I saw his bit like. It was, I don't know, it might have been UFC's Instagram, but he was just like shadow boxing mm -hmm. before he started working out outside. I'm like, this is fucking That's horrible. Crazy. But he gets out there and he yep. fucking wins. But yeah, he's like throwing and it looks almost like karate style. Like his hands are coming so far down. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. We've seen it so many times though. And then they go in there and just fucking her game. Close your eyes, whip an overhand, fucking put someone down. Yeah. like, well, all right, you know what you're doing, I guess. And then the Kevin Holland, Alex Oliveira at welterweight. I think that's a good match for that's Kevin. That's the the Brazilian cowboy? Yep. Yeah, that should be good. Holland's so long, man. Yeah. Oliveira, he long. he cracks, though. He always comes out fucking hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be a good fight. Greg Hardy versus the Sergey Spivak. You ever seen Greg Hardy in real life? No. He's fucking giant, dude. He's like just a giant human. Well, like as big as Nganu or like I, I would say not as big as Nganu, but his just waist and his 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 butt and his legs are just huge. Yeah. Like it's scary that he's a freak athlete. It's like what the fuck? Yeah. Well, I mean, he was what, like all like one the best at his position in football, like one year. I think he was like all pro. Was he a D D lineman or D line, D N, something like that. Was he? One of those Oh, and then the week after uh, the week after we got Marlin versus Song Yudong. Good fight there. Sodik versus Caceres. Damn, Caceres has just been around, dude. Yeah, his whole career has basically been UFC, right? I think he only had like two or three yeah. fights before he got into the UFC. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. You and uh you and um um Emmy been watching any shows? Good shows? We finished Ozark. I guess we just finished Cobra Kai and Was it good? Yeah, Ozark's Ozark's good, but it's hard. Like Ozark's hard for me because there's like no there's no one to root for. It, oh. Like everyone's a shitty person on there. Like yeah. everyone's just like a piece <laughs> of shit in their own way. So some of them are bigger pieces of shit, but and then for Cobra Kai it's funny, but it's just like I like whenever they're like make fun of themselves about yeah. how how seriously they take karate because like obviously in real life no one should be taking <laughs> yeah. karate this seriously and have like a 30 40 year grudge with someone over a karate match over yeah a high school sure. karate match but just with how with how over the top it is it's funny yeah i've been watching we just been bouncing around we watch fucking bachelor and then i we we've been watching a little bit of the new jersey shore and it's just entertaining for me i eat an edible and i watch these guys <laughs> and it's just fucking funny dude they're they those guys are Good. Who's, who's the New Jersey Shore? Is it it's the, the same, same guys? It's the same crew. So they're like 50, 50 years old now or something? I think like they, they got to be in their 30s. And they're all oh, just that it? like rich as fuck coming together. Now. Are and, they uh, living in the same house? Like No, they went to a different house. But Mike, the situation, he got, <laughs> he got in tax trouble. So he ended up having to go to prison for eight months. <laughs> and like before he goes to prison he, he they give him 30 days so pick when you want to choose your i mean 30 days you got to go do your eight months and they're they're having this big immaculate weddings probably the wedding had Did to be a quarter million married? yeah quarter million but mike the situation remember in earlier episodes he was just the biggest fucking douche ever now he's just the most positive say everything right I'm just not, good. i couldn't even really say which guy was which oh, really? the only one that i would know Pauly D. would be Paul okay, D. maybe I, I was thinking Snooky because she's the short, she's little, a chick, chunky girl, right? Yeah, yeah. So that would be kind of the only one that I would be able to probably pick out. Yeah, and she's just rich as. Is Polly D the one from the meme where he's like, he's got the, the, the slick up slick, hair. Yeah, like kind of like Johnny Bravo style. Yeah, yeah. It's weird too because like like Snooky, she's got fucking like ten million Insta followers. It's like. In this day and age, you get on a reality show and you get that many Insta followers. It's crazy because then you, you're pretty set up. Yeah. You're pretty like set you, up. You just gonna... have sponsors. <laughs> yeah. Just sponsored posts on Instagram. Yeah, but that shit's been entertaining. I've been enjoying that. I, pr I probably wouldn't enjoy it much as if I wasn't high. <laughs> but I've been doing these edibles are like 5 milligram THC, 50 milligram CBD, just doing half. So it's like 2 milligrams of uh, CBD. I mean 2 milligrams of THC. Just a little, little bit. You been fucking with edibles much? Yeah, I mostly do with the, uh, that syrup. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm sponsored by them, but Bank that Bros. Bang Bros syrup. Like, that? like, yeah. But 
I'll hit that, and then I just fucking I just sink into the couch. And if I'm watching stuff, I'll be like, <laughs> I don't know. It makes me kind of think deeper. Like I'll be watching, yeah. and uh, you know, I'm big in, I'm a big comic book guy. I like watching Marvel and stuff, and see something. And it's like, man, these guys are literally just standing there fighting CGI. Like they're just acting like they're fighting something, and uh-huh. then they're probably standing in a big green screen room. <laughs> like just imagine, you got to yeah. throw on this fucking costume this superhero costume and they give you these things and they're like act like you're fighting a monster yeah but you're just standing there in a green like it's just a big room that's what i'm always thinking i'm always like going into scenes like that or like some dramatic scenes where someone's sitting there crying and not just on comic book movies i was like man just imagine you're that actor and you're sitting there and you're crying but like the other actor's not even there like yeah. you're just <laughs> yeah. it's just on a uh, close-up so i always think like that i always think weird like that well that's what sam harris says he says a lot of those plant medicines open up like different neural pathways in your brain so you yeah. think about things different and I have this conversation, like I was on, my, on the phone with my mom for an hour and a half last night debating because she watched my, my uh, podcast with Paul Check, and she's like, yeah, but I just, I, in some ways, I just don't like him. I hate, I like, I don't, she almost hates him. Like she's almost like, he's into spirit. strong. Yeah, spiritualism he, he, he talks about. And it's just like, it's almost like any, anything, anything or any point that comes up with a deeply religious person they're going to block it. And, and, and in Jehovah's Witnesses, if something comes in but questions of religion, that's Satan talking. So you need to what, block that out. What is, like, what does she have issues with with his spiritualism? He, he, he talks about having, uh, he talks about in that podcast about different tribes and the way they do it and the way he does it. He has two wives, so he does it a little different. And she was just like, and then he said, our human biology isn't made like for Christianity and Christianity and, and their rules that they have. And she just didn't like that at all but man like the re- religious brainwashing is so fucking crazy to me like that so was... crazy to me hour and a half i wish i would have recorded the conversation with my mom. it would just be the best podcast <laughs> and because was you, she debates you, with me was you yeah little yeah little tips <laughs> but then i can talk and then i don't get fired up but it's at least she talks to me about it but at the end of the day it's going to boil down to just faith in the bible like how many times has the Bible been re rewrote? Yeah, and like all the different hundreds? languages, and and then it's it's written through. Yeah, I'm not I'm not saying because there's a lot of good things in the Bible too, but it's written through humans, humans that say yeah. they're writing the Bible through God. Yeah, you got to have a, and that's all it is is faith. But you got to have a lot of faith to be like, I believe that this is the Word of God. Yeah, it's like man. Could that really be written down? I yeah. Mean. And I always tell her, I'm like, if I'm a good person and I'm doing good things, like have good relationships, taking care of myself, taking care of my body and just being a good person. And then Jehovah doesn't put me in paradise because I didn't fall. I, because I celebrated Christmas and because I didn't follow these, 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 these weird rules. Like, then I don't want to go there. It's like, that's really more on him than you. Like, yeah. Like if, yeah, I feel the same way, you know, cause, uh, well not Jehovah's witness, but. I think one of the things in like normal, not normal, but other like more mainstream Christianity is just that you have to believe. It's yeah. like, man, well, I don't believe, but like, still good. I feel like person. I'm doing yeah. like pretty good shit. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm don't think that I'm a piece of shit. I don't think that I shouldn't go. If there is a heaven and a hell, I don't yeah. think I should go to hell. Like, if you're not gonna let me in, just because I don't believe and I didn't um, like do confessional right before I died. Mm-hmm. Uh, it kind of more says more about you than me, I think. Yeah. And I promised my mom I wouldn't talk bad about the religion. And I'm never talking bad about it. Like, I don't mean to be talking bad about it. But, like, there's other religious leaders in Mormonism or, or all these different that will that'll debate with her about why their Bible's right and why yours is wrong. And you guys just, it'll just debate back and forth and back and forth. And there's hundreds of people that do that way. Yeah. So I'm like, I told my mom, I said, who are you going to like, are you willing, are you willing to challenge your beliefs? Yeah. Are you willing to, if some, are you just willing to look and challenge your beliefs? And she said, well, why would I at this point? So it's like, <laughs> if you're not willing to challenge your beliefs, <laughs> I mean, then, I understand then, like, how old is she? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, she's probably just, you know, you know, it's hard to change. Like it's hard oh. to change. And then if she was to do that, that would probably be like the biggest change that she could possibly make and in that's her what entire I said. life. And that's why I'm like, I support it for you because I think it's really good for you. And you have someone to like some faith. I, I don't want to change you at all, 
But for me, I'm just di- I'm different. I'm in a Trying different to take scenario. Take a little more critical look at things. Yeah. And yeah. then she's like, she's a, it does not like it will not work if there's sex with another woman with your partner. I'm like, well, how did your marriages go? Oh, two divorces, two bad divorces. <laughs> that like that <laughs> kind of shit doesn't work most of the time either. Sometimes, yeah, obviously, divorce is like fifty percent of marriages end in divorce. Oh, I think it's over now. I think it's getting closer to 60. Before I was getting married, I was looking up all these things and you saying it to Emmy. I'm like, well, <laughs> if you want to break up, here we go. This is the way to do it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I fucking love my mom, though. And she just means well. Is she married again? No. She, and she's not she's allowed, two... according to the, the, the religion, she's not allowed to even date or even get another relationship and tell the guy that the last guy she got divorced with goes to the church and tells them he was unfaithful. And then she's allowed to date and he's never going to fucking do that. So she's never allowed to date again. Was, so was he a Jehovah's witness also? Yeah. And now he's not. So was your, was your dad a Jehovah's witness? Yep. Yep. And then now he's not, but he hasn't been for. Yeah. Since I was, since I was in ninth grade. So about 20 years, about 18 years. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. It's fucking crazy. I I love the religion debates, though, because a lot of the times she has a comeback for everything I say with a scripture. And some of these scriptures... Man, be, that's good memory. Well, like, she, I think she writes them down for, for, to talk to me about. But then some of these scriptures could be interpreted so many different ways. They use all these, these, these words and stuff that could be interpreted so many yeah. different ways. So it's like, yeah, I can interpret that this way. And you interpret it this, that way. I don't know. The religion yeah. talk it's weird how many, up. I mean, to me, maybe just like coming from the res, I never really, there were a few Jehovah's Witness, but I didn't know yeah. like any, I didn't have any friends that were. And then, you know, at the lab, there was what you, Keone, Avery, Avery and yeah. Ethan. <laughs> yeah. It was like four out of 35 guys. Like, oh, man, Ethan was too. I didn't know that. Well, yeah, but he, so when, when his dad pulled them out, Avery and Ethan's dad, when they pulled him out, just Ethan was younger. Oh, okay. So, so he wasn't as like, when when's your plan it. to move back to the reservation, Pine Ridge? So we, I'll be here through Courtney's fight for sure, uh, April thirtieth. But we'll be moving back. I mean, I got to be out of my place April seventeenth. So I think early April we'll get a U-Haul, take everything back. And then I'll just put it all in the place and then I'll come back and keep training or not keep training, keep trying to help out. And I'm going to go into Dracar's fight on the 16th. Okay, sweet. And then Courtney's on the 30th. And then just seeing that, uh, in May, the UFC might be coming to Phoenix. Yep. So I know like I'd be able to do that one. Like, um, I, I corner Mario. Mm-hmm. So, I've been kind of being his mate guy. So mm-hmm. if, if he gets on there, like I'd be able to stay for that extra week and then I'd bounce up. So that. what's the plan at the uh, at Pine Ridge? Are you guys going to just get your own place or then what's your plan once you get settled? Yeah. So we, like I'd been looking at some land, um, thinking probably going to pull the trigger on like 90 acres and, uh, but it'll still take a while to get a house built. So what is a, like a 90 acres in South Dakota run? It's 650 an acre. So like fifty five thousand, six fifty an acre, six six hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, six hundred fifty bucks yeah. an acre. Yeah, no way. Yeah, that's what everyone here is like. What? What? Yeah. But uh, so I'm gonna I'm planning on open up a like a food truck. Oh uh, sweet. Yeah. Get a what kind of stuff? I've been working at a wing place in town mm-hmm. and I didn't need it. Like I, <clears throat> not for the money I was making, not like good money coaching, but getting the experience. Yeah. But just so I can learn like how they do it. It's called Valley wings here in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Where's so, it at? They have a couple locations. They have a location in Apache junction, a Pat and Scottsdale. And then there's one next to the lab where the lab is now Greenway and 19th Ave. So just South of the okay. gym. And do you learn a lot? Yeah, I mean, just uh, like it seems like kind of simple stuff. Uh-huh. More, well, just the business side is the harder part. But I just wanted to learn because I I've been eating there since they opened, and I really like their wings. Mm-hmm. And I had talked to them even before my heart stuff. I was like, hey, you know, after I retire, I think that I would want to open up a wing place. And so I had at first I was planning on getting a building, 
but talking with those guys they're saying you know like a food truck's the way to go especially to start because you don't have the overhead Mm. you don't have to worry about rent electricity all this other stuff it's a lot easier and profit wise they're saying that like a good day on the food truck you make about the same profit since you don't have to worry about the extra employees or Mm -hmm. you know just all this extra cost that you have as the business owner that you make the same profit for yourself versus having more employees paying the rent and stuff Mm -hmm. so the food truck was what he said he wished that he started with instead of just getting a building first sweet so the acreage is it close to your dad the acres you're looking at uh it it would probably be about 20 miles which is close fuck yeah so move up there get some land possibly plop a house up yeah definitely definitely planning on getting a house built but just kind of takes a little bit you know and then yeah well now everything's so expensive like i was even talking we're gonna we're gonna rent when we first get back and this lady, her and her husband, are my dad's good friends, and they built their own house. And then they just kept building it, building it, building it. And now it's got like 12 bedrooms. It's a huge house. It's got a pool in it. And they said that they was trying to build their – they was trying to help their son build a house. And just buying all of the lumber and stuff was like way more expensive than even two years ago. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's like, is well – So is that land irrigated already? Uh. There's a river on it. Oh, sweet. There's a there's a little stream that goes through it. Not Damn. a little stream. It's it's like a it's like a good like you could definitely go fish for some catfish and shit in there. So I bet a lot of people are gonna be pumped you're moving back. Yeah. Pumped you're moving back. And then so what's a day day up there like? Well that's the thing. I'm not sure. Like uh depending on how the food truck goes, like probably just be in the truck for like five hours a day but i could do all of the prep work and everything yeah at home you know yeah so and that'd be cool. then i can i was thinking just do all my business stuff like ranchers do and be like okay if because i'm gonna so it's not gonna be a truck it's gonna be a trailer so i'll lease a truck that'll be on the business account um could get a nice big oven in the house that'll be on the business account and mm-hmm. get a nice big fridge i'll be like just gonna yeah, do yeah. all that stuff so do most of the cooking at home because what we do at Valley is they they cook the wings and then they put them in the fridge. So then whenever you order, say you come in and you order 10 wings. Mm-hmm. So then you put those, you you deep fry those for like five minutes and then they're recooked. and Then sauce them up. Yeah, sauce them up after that. Fuck, that's bad. But I mean, I would assume that I'll also be, I'll definitely be helping my dad with his wrestling team. You know, I'm, I don't want to be a coach. Like I don't want to be there Mm -hmm. for every single day, but probably a few days a week, go help him out. Um, and then just whoever wants help wrestling or if people want to like learn a little bit of boxing or something, what are you going to miss about Phoenix the most? You think Uh, besides the gym? Yeah. I mean, that's basically it. Yeah. Like I said, like last night, there were a couple shots popped off at my house. Like not trying to yeah. at my apartment, you know, I'm not trying to be there. Yeah. It's a shitty apartment. Like shitty people live there. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, food? Thought, I the guess food? the food. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Like I can't just get snacky and run to camps yeah. or in and out or whatever. Yeah. I guess I'm not really in and out guy. We had in and out at Mario's fight. But what burger, what kind of burger guy are you? <sighs> there's a, there's a little, um, it's called, lucky's burgers it's it's not a like a fast food place it, not bad but that's what i liked it's just little like mom and pop place right next to my apartment and i like that we got uh we was gonna go there on sunday actually and then it was closed and we went to smash burger and it was fine yeah like, if you want you know if you just want like some nice greasy burger and mm-hmm. some mm-hmm. fried up fries fuck yeah well that was perfect what are we at for time jay Boom. Fucking perfection. Okay, boys. Uh we'll put uh David's um Instagram in the in the in the bio and shit, so go give him a follow. All right. Um uh, yeah, patreon.com slash Red Hawk Academy. Still shit's going up there all the time. Early release on vlogs, techniques, some cooking vids. Um yeah, if you want to support the podcast, that's the place to do it. But other than that, thanks. Peace. Peter gonna shuffle in, I'm gonna throw it too.